to the lockup issue one, episode one. I don't know how to fuck we're gonna remember this, and I shouldn't have sworn. No. But I got a beer in my hand. So I can just start over. We can say, welcome back to the Spinner Rack, because I have my comics remix. <laughs> this is the lockup. Yeah. This is uh, what we talk nothing but wrestling. It's all about the wrestling. Namely, WWE. Only because neither one of us really watches TNA. Because TNA sucks. It is what it is. It's a poor man's WWE. It but you know what? They got some talent. They, 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 got, they got talent down there. It's just, you know, the writing is whatever. Um, I don't watch Ring of Honor. I mean, I catch a couple matches here and there. I've never seen Ring of Honor. Um, I'll mention, like, in Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Do you watch Lucha Underground? I have started watching Lucha Underground. Now, you know who I want to get on this show? Eva Lee's. The hunt, she goes by The Huntress. Yeah. She's from Chicago, from what I understand. I she was not tough say, enough. I thought you were going to say Robert Rodriguez. Guess what was her? Hell yeah. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> Score from Spinner Rack. Ivelisse, please, if you're listening, we'd love, love, love to have you on the show. We'll figure something out of how later, but consider it a big fan. Anyway, so for this inaugural issue of the lockup, I guess it's not really inaugural because the boys did this before, but now. Yeah, John and Tony did this for five or six uh, episodes, and now it's our turn. We've taken over. So. It's time. We got WrestleMania 31 still playing in the background because, you know. We love it so much. It was that damn. Good. We sat here from Monday when you watched our breaking the fourth wall segment to today. We haven't moved. Yeah, I we haven't you. showered. We drink it malt liquor. This is Mike's, dude. This ain't really it's malt liquor. Yeah, but I mean, it's like you made it seem like holy shit. You know, we got some forties in a paper bag. And That's true. It's not like we got some OV. You know. Yeah, we got Mike's. He's what are you drinking? It's all English. I got. I got that blood orange. I got a it's black tasty. cherry. It's pretty tasty. I would like that I have to even open. It's fine again. Yeah. Well, my mom was going to bring beer, and I told him no, because I was like, well, we don't, I, I'm not sure I'm drinking. And I was like, I wasn't sure you were going to drink. But it's cool, because my mom bought a pizza. Yeah, totally. And you supplied the drinks. Thanks. Yeah, no shit. Eat your Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, WrestleMania. That's pretty good. Who's WrestleMania that? 31, holy crap. Yeah. Now, um, it's been a long time since I could sit back and say, you know what? That whole WrestleMania card had me. Yeah, it was a good card. It was a good card. I mean, there were some things that, uh, not so much the card itself going into it. Like, oh, you yeah, know, no, I know what I'll talk about. It was good. Man. It was once you saw it, you're like, wow. Bottom top, that was a great WrestleMania. Um. Much better than WrestleMania last year, which we talked about mm-hmm. in issue, I believe it was some old seven, issue. Six, five, uh, 42. But um, we're going to start this off. We're going to go earlier, um, last, what, last week, week before, before the week before leading up to WrestleMania. Brian and I went on our Facebook page. <laughs> Actually, a couple hours before WrestleMania, because yeah, yeah, we yeah. are slackers. <laughs> Brian and I went on the Facebook page, and we each listed our predictions for who would win what match. So what we want to do run down our predictions, how right or wrong we were, and then from there, just kind of delve into the match itself. So let's just start off with the first match. The tag match. Show. Yeah, the tag match. The, the, the four-way, fatal four-way tag match. It was the Usos. Yeah, it was. It was the Usos versus your boys. New Day. New Day. Um, who else was on there? Uh, the tag champs, obviously, Antonio Cesaro. Oh, excuse me. Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. As well as Los Matadores. Good match. Um, a lot of high spots. I'm, you know what? I'm actually surprised the Usos got in as much time as the Usos as a team that they did seem that one of them is on crutches. Yeah, totally. You know, and that's a legit injury. Um, it was uh, it was a good match. I don't really necessarily feel like uh, uh, I, 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 what the hell they called now? I forgot the names. Cool. The guys with the little bull. Matadors. Oh, Matadors, Matadores, whatever. whatever. I don't feel like those guys deserve to be in that match. I don't. Who would you put in? Um, I would like to say that I would like to have seen the Ascension in that match, but they also are, were not deserving of being in that match. They, you know what? The company dropped the ball hard with that. Um, like they they did. And, you know, you can't, uh, I know we're going to get off subject here, but i got to address this. To have them come out and then JBL just bash and bash and bash and bash and bash. And then you've got them coming out, and they're talking shit about every great tag team that ever came before. 
Uh, you're just you WWE set those guys up to fail, yeah. which is messed up because they came up from NXT, WWE's developmental territory. Yeah. So how the hell are you going to bring a, a great tag team from your developmental territory into the big leagues and then just screw them over? Yeah. And every week, JBL is like, "Oh, these guys are heads. buried them, like man. just effing buried them, man. They were a great tag team, in my opinion. That's the they're the future of the WWE tag team division, whether." Now I'm giving you the look because you had me till that. You You had me till that. Now I'm just like. They are a good tag team. You know what? They will have those belts eventually. I think. Now, in ring skill, yeah, 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 totally. It's the gimmick. Well, they. they, The gimmick is crap. They have set them up since they've come up from NXT to look like uh, like a new. Dollar Tree version of the Warriors. Yeah, totally. Which they had their own gimmick. It was great. Stick with it. You know, don't fix it if it ain't broken. Vince McMahon, you can mother effort. But right, anyway, so going back to the tag back match. Back to the match, I, before the match, like, my pick was Cesaro Kid. I knew they had it. They needed it I to. I don't even remember. Where's the call? I just wasn't they needed the it to legitimize their, uh, their rank. And uh, I don't really see where you said who won that. Oh, I did. You know why? Because when I did it, I said that, uh, that, that it already happened or something. Didn't I? No, you did not. Oh, I, was, I didn't pick anybody. So, yeah, we can just go ahead and skip that. You know, but. Excuse me. Overall, I thought it was a good match. Not a great it was, match. It wasn't great, but it was good. I mean, it was, it was on the pre-show, so I mean, it doesn't really count as WrestleMania 31. It was on it the was pre-show. a decent was opener good. to kind of get you like, okay, so this is kind of the move we're going to go. It was, it was, you know, it was a lot of high flying action. What I don't understand is you've got a two-hour pre-show. This match didn't happen until well, the first hour was all high in the second play. hour, yeah, and it didn't leave enough time for the match that I didn't even see. The Battle Royale. The Andre the Giant. You didn't watch it? I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. I, I, it was and there were four hours of WrestleMania. I didn't start watching it until 2 o'clock in the morning because of the Walking Dead season finale. I had to watch that first. You know, sorry. Had to. Had to. Right. I had to stay. I stayed off Facebook for 12 hours, which is unprecedented to me because I didn't want spoilers you know, on Walking Dead. Every fucking time. Every fucking match, dude, you were like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. So I saw like Will Smith one time. I went on Facebook one time during that 12 hour period and saw a little snippet from you and I was like, shit. What you I don't avoid this. I don't even remember what it was. Hey, it's funny. Oh, it was the uh, it was the NWO and DX. DX. Every time I posted, I was like, Brian don't know what he's missing right now. Well, you know what? My old lady's not as big of a wrestling fan as I am. It's not good. Yeah, it's okay, so good. moving on to Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Who would have thought Big Show? I honestly didn't think Big Show was going to take that. I didn't think Big Show was going to take it. And then when I saw replays and saw that Damian Danielle came this close. That's who you had picked. That was my pick. My pick was right there. I the, really felt like Miz Dow. The favorite was 2015 was, was right going to be a breakout year for Miz Dow. Crap. Call him Damian. Go by the man's name. The now guy's my still a wrestler. Don't what are they going to do? Like, what is winning the, the, the Battle Royal entail? Like, it didn't do anything really for Shit. Cesaro. If anything, it buried him a little bit more. It did. You know, like, now that Big Show has this trophy, what? Nobody gave a damn about Big Show. Nobody gave a damn about Big you Show. Know, he had the belt. He's the giant. So I think part of it, I think that was probably a mistake, a misstep in the first year that he didn't directly win it the first time. He was involved in the first time, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, okay. I believe so. Him not getting it the first time out wasn't Yeah, mistake. because Cesaro, it was even Cesaro the yeah. last two. And it, Cesaro pulled him over by the neck. Yeah, it should have what happened again, except... Didn't work. Um, but I, I get it. I, I don't expect Big Show to be around much longer. Honestly, you, he's, you can see that, you know, it's it's getting to him. He's getting old. It's getting harder. The only time, it. I'll be honest, the only time I was a really hardcore Big Show fan is when he was tagging with Jericho and they were at Jericho Show. Remember that? And they came out in the suits and stuff. That the last was time cool. I was hardcore for Big Show was when he had a feud with the Big Boss Man. Oh my God! Yes, I smacked out and his if I had a died. son as stupid as you, <laughs> I would wish for cancer so that I would die too. Goddamn big boss man! That's just classic. Oh, classic uh, boss man. And in the uh, the funeral, the funeral, yeah. where the big boss man shows up with the old Dukes of Hazzard yeah. looking uh, it was, straight out of the South police car. It looked like uh, the Blues Brothers. Yes, right? yes, and he hooks up the coffin and Big Show. And all his yeah. glamorous Grammy Award, not Grammys, Oscar Award winning performance, jumps on the casket, crying and kicking and screaming. Oh, Getting God. Driving across the graveyard. Classic. That's classic WWE. Oh, man. Classic. All right, so let's go on to the opening match. 
the, the official opening match to uh, WrestleMania. The 31. official opening match to WrestleMania was the Intercontinental match. The uh, ladder match. Really? <laughs> opening with that? That was well, a great friggin' match. What else do you open? Compared to what you, you know, know what? It was a card. pretty it was a pretty stacked deck. Why not open with Cena and Rusev? I hate to say it. Cena's not as big with draws as he used to be. Duh. You know, it's that that would have been the match to open with. It was a great match, man. A great match. So many highlight real moments in that ladder match. Uh, the the one that really sticks with me the most is the uh who did you have to win that? I actually wanted Dean Ambrose to win that. Mm-hmm. I had also pointed out in our post.com which was next at Facebook that uh, I felt like Daniel Bryan winning it would do a lot to legitimize him deserving to be back in the running for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, kind of so, like how it used to be in the 90s. Yeah, so obviously that fits up that also. I really thought it was going to go to Dean Ambrose. I thought Barrett was going to retain, like I was telling you before, only because I, um, I read online that uh, live event programming has Daniel Bryan versus uh, Wade Barrett versus Dolph Ziggler in a, in a three-way for the match. So I figured Barrett was going to retain. I like my match in that match for me was Wade Barrett giving the ball hammer to like everybody off the ladder. The dude, the power bomb, the Luke. Uh, oh Luke yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. With Dean Ambrose onto the ladder. That was that sick. was tight. That was sick. Man. Uh, the, that took Ambrose out. He was yeah. done. The low key for that match was the. Headbutt war between the concussion prone <laughs> show off and the goat. That was a little much. I that mean, you could see like much. they're like, yeah, you know, a little bit too much. It's a little much. Yeah. It's a good match, though. Good, solid match. So, yeah. It's a great, great intercontinental match. Then leading us into, um, what was one? After the intercontinental, it was the intercontinental. I can't talk. Was it the Divas or the Divas? Oh, no, that was later. It was Orton Rollins. Orton Rollins. What a finish. Yeah. Second best RKO I have ever seen. First, the greatest RKO I've ever first, personally witnessed. No, second best. Um, you, need, you know what you need to go do? I saw it. Okay. That was a damn good RKO. But you still think that's not the first? Well, no, it's the it's the, it's the 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 greatest one I've ever actually saw when it happened. Gotcha. Um, man, this like legitimately made me a fan of Randy Orton. I have not been an Orton fan at all. I have thought he's arrogant and just irritating. And I mean, I liked him for a while before the authority stuff when he was like with Daniel Bryant. He was being cool, and, you know. Mm-hmm. He was kind of like going face, but then he went back heel. But I despise Seth Rollins' character so much. Really? Seth Rollins, like Rollins? Great, I cannot, cannot stand him. He plays the perfect heel. I mean, exactly. like, he he is, plays it well because he talks a big game. He can back it up. But on his terms. If it's not his terms, he's being yeah, see, that's, that's he's my treated. problem of the, heel. the evolution of the heel in wrestling is that heels back in the day talk the talk or walk the walk. Yeah. Now heels have to have backup. That makes them a better heel because it shows that they can't do anything. It just makes you want to see them get their head back. I guess it, that's more. a good point. That's you a good know? point. But this match gave me everything I wanted. So Out of the three matches that I actually correctly predicted, this was the first. I actually had Orton. Uh, no, I had Rollins went over. Yeah, I, I don't think. Know why. I think. I don't know. You, I, uh, I I think you actually had Rollins going over too. Did I? Yep, you had Rollins over Orton. Yep. Well, oh, you did real simplistic. I actually got all like. I didn't have time, and, dude. And I posted that it. during the pre-show. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's I why posted, I posted the tag match. I posted two hours before, so well, I, I did it during the pre-show. But uh, it was a great match, man. That RKO, dude. Yeah. Was. So, moving on from there, we had the match that I was foaming at the mouth to watch. I could not wait Triple H versus to see Triple H against the icon, or in WWE, the vigilante known as Sting. 14 years in the making. To have a WWE versus WCW legit match. Yeah, not some invasion storyline after Vince. Sorry. Well, I guess I mean Vince still owes him, so it's really it's it's a move. Dude, you know what? At first, Sting losing. And I think I had Sting going over. Everybody had. Problems. I had Sting going over because I felt like this was going to be Sting's only match in WrestleMania. Yeah. I figured I wrote this as Sting's doing one WWE match next year Hall of Fame. That's really how I felt about it. So I felt like we're going to fucking give Sting the match Hall of Fame next year. He's done. Yeah. No, it didn't turn out that way. Um. 
Sting's interest kind of bothered me a little bit with the Japanese. Yeah, I just, it was cool, but I just didn't see how it related. I, I don't see how it related to Sting either. It was kind of um, like, my pet peeve. I hate. I always hate it when Sting wears black, white, and red. red. I hate that. That's right, the big red dude. Give me the all black Sting dude. Dye your hair super dark black. Let it go. Well, it must have been a tie into the fact that he was in the NWO for a short time, which would. It makes sense considering what happened later on in the match. Yeah. But before we get to that Triple H's weird Terminator thing, I mean, it was kind of cool, but it's kind of like, like I said, it really reminded me of, of the Robocop and Sting stuff back in WCW 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's whatever. <clears throat> in a year from now, we'll see Mattel come out with the Triple H from the uh, 31 entrance because Elite Series 35, which should be out next month, mm-hmm. has his entrance from last year, the red and gold uh, Shao Kahn. Right, right. Call it. But yeah, Sting actually losing that match surprised, I think, everyone. But if you look at it in terms of it was WWE versus WCW, then yeah, I see it what they do it. My boy was like, there's no way in hell they're giving Sting that match. It's WWE. And I'm like, dude, I told him, just like I explained to you, that's us. But no, he was adamant that it was. So kudos to my boy McCoy for calling that one. But you know what? Highlights of the match itself. Dude, DX music hits. Out comes still in shape, swole ass Billy Gunn. Running down with his super neon green shoes, right, right behind Road Dog and X Pac. Like, dude, really? That, that was cool. It, it was a good moment. It was you're like, cool. Holy crap! You know, like DX is at ringside. That's cool. And then, like, you're just like, well, DX is here. What's going to happen? All of a sudden, that pimp music comes out <laughs> and out walks the Outsiders and Hollywood Hogan, the NWO. I ain't gonna lie, man. I was in the living room. Was I awesome, totally man. marked out. Was awesome. I marked out hard, man. I was like, jumping was, up and uh, down. That match was like a wrestling fanboy's wet dream. In the 90s. In the, yeah, in the 90s. Like all those old dudes that were young dudes watching the Attitude Era at WCW. You all know what we mean. Awards. You know. And you know, it was just a great match all around. But when they went ahead and they hit, Shawn Michaels came out when he ran through the crowd and super kick scene. I didn't see that coming anywhere. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't expecting that either. It was no. a good match. Uh, I like that, you know, they had for boys show some class and shake Sting's hand at the end and like, you know. Yeah. So it was it was a nice ending to, it was a nice cap to yeah. the Monday Night Wars, which had been over for. Well, I was, just, I was actually going to use that cap word. Uh, the next night on Raw, they had uh, Sting come out on the WWE Network and announce that he's still open and willing to work with WWE. It's just the, the ball's in their court. And the crowd was chanting Undertaker so loud that the reports are coming in. From, I think Russell's own, who also reported it from Wrestling Observer, that WWE actually had to turn down the volume on the crowd chance for The Undertaker. That's how loud it was. It was a good match, man. For a couple of old guys, they, they, put, they put on a good match. Yeah. Speaking of old guys, the NWO, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, I've seen better days. Hey, man, still the NWO. But it was good, man. It was good to see them. Man. It was good to see them. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Let's move on. Moving on to... So that tag match with the Bellas, Page and AJ is next. So you had picked. I picked the Bellas, the Bellas for some reason. And like I had said before, or just a couple seconds ago, I really felt like they were going to set up a Page, AJ, three. Nikki Bella. Yeah, why do I keep saying three? Three way for the title. I wouldn't mind that. Which would have been interesting to see three in there. Page, uh, Nikki, and. Uh, oh, yeah, that's all. Age, who the hell's age? Paige, AJ, and <laughs> is that their new tag team name? If she would have retired, Paige. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, like I said, they they needed the win. I felt like, but now my whole point to them needing the win is half moved since AJ did retire. Mm-hmm. Spoiler: If you haven't heard it yet, AJ retired. No, and she done, son. But uh, good match. You know the Divas don't get nearly enough much credit. They're starting to get a little more screen time on Raw. Uh, they got a lot of good talent, man. A lot of talent. Oh, yeah. Some of them not so talented. Eva Marie. You know what? That's not her fault, though. Oh, she's new, though. I yeah, and it's new, like, so it's not her fault. hey, we're going to take you because you got the looks, and we're going to thrust you into the spot. Yeah, and we're going to actually train you. Yeah, it's not her fault. She's no good. I don't care for uh, Rosa. Oh, Rosa, man. You know, she could stick with being Fandango's arm candy for all I care, which I feel like she kind of takes down from Fandango, though. What happened to that? Guy? I don't know what happened. We're, we're not getting there. He was, he was he's flashed the thing. So regardless, I still love seeing Paige on the screen. I really feel like that Prince Pretty. Um, oh my God, I can never remember his name, but I can always remember they call him Prince Pretty. The guy down in NXT, the model guy. Oh, uh, Tyler. Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze. 
I really feel like Tyler Breeze could come up and him and Van Dank would make a fantastic day. Oh, yeah, definitely. Even though their gimmicks don't match. You know, and even though gotta... Tyler Breeze looks exactly like Dolph Ziggler. You see that? A little bit. They, they, look, they look the same. Okay, not maybe not exactly. Give me the selfie stick. That's hilarious. It is hilarious. But, Good gimmick um, that guy's got. Yeah. Good. So after that, we go into the 24 or 20 something minute interlude, if you will, with the snore fest. Stephanie and Triple H claiming that they own the WWE, it's their ring, and the wrestlers like are there. Like they're slaves, and we get to yeah. play with the Jews. And then the rock comes the out, crowd pops. Yeah. He, he, they talk, they talk, they talk. She threatens him. He says a slap. She slaps him. She says, go ahead and slap me back. We're still, excuse me, watching WrestleMania 31, and this is an awesome moment. And the look on Memphis face says it all, especially what's about to happen here. Bam! That. For those that uh, obviously you can't see, we are watching the uh, Bray Wyatt Taker match, and ta- uh, Wyatt just did the Spider Walk, where uh, Taker sits up and looks at him, and Wyatt like falls in like disbelief, and the look on the cameraman's face is absolutely priceless. It was it was really hilarious. It was that was a great moment, man. It was. It, was, it really moment. was. We'll get to that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so Stephanie slaps the Rock, um, and she's like, you know, daring him to hit her back. Of course, he's not going to. Yeah. So she says, you know, get out of the ring. She kicks him out of the arena. She kicks him out of the pay-per-view. And uh, he remembers that none other than the women's UFC heavyweight champion, Ronda Rousey. Rosie, Rousey. 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 Which is kind of funny considering I that uh, I feel like Dana White in the past has really smack talked Vince McMahon the WWE because it's not real. Um, so it was kind of strange for me to see her there being that she is the current she is the current UFC women's champion right now. I don't follow her. But uh, I, I know she's in the new Fast movie, Fast and Furious, mm-hmm. which she'll just get to die like my girl Gina Carano did in the last one. But whatever. What's one of the <laughs> other ones? Man, I've got a, a Carano obsession. I can't help Apparently. you. Apparently. badass. Should have been Wonder Woman. I'm never going to let it go. I think it's funny because your <laughs> you're Carano, like, it comes up all the time. Mm-hmm. Just the way David and I would always somehow figure Rob Liefeld into a conversation. I remember that. You guys were, like, hard with the Liefeld. I, I, don't, I don't understand you it. You guys sucks. I really hope I don't ever have to interview him one day. Cause we'll I was just going to say, Rob Liefeld, like, I want you like on, we still want you on the show. Like, I mean, I'm sure he's a nice dude and everything, but the guy can't, I mean, I can't draw for shit, okay? I couldn't, I'll give you some stick figures and some fucking, you know, rocket launchers and shit like I was in second grade. <laughs> so I really shouldn't talk shit, but at least I know that, you know, you know, pets aren't supposed to be fucking, you know, just like a lot. three feet, I'm sorry. Like, I could Rob Liefeld just brought down and he's, he's a bastard. But anyway, so <laughs> Ronda comes out. Rock makes a couple of jokes. Great shirt, shirt, by the way. The, the Vegeta shirt, power level over awesome. nine thousand. And it's, you know, it's, it is funny that um, one of the, you know the Rock is always you know, especially now more so than before with his you know his jokes, his one liners. Mm-hmm. You know, he says you know she's gonna stick her arm down your throat, grab your <laughs> intestines, and jump rope with your fallopian tubes. That which was hilarious. Was classic. That was a classic Rock line, man. You still got it. You know? Yeah. So. Oh, not, not, to, not to break out just on the Rock News on SNL that same weekend Saturday night. Best SNL ever. You know, SNL cast I, sucks. I saw some of it. He was funny. Anything he was in was great. The segment I saw was uh, where he was not Junkyard Dog and not, uh, where he was, you know what I'm talking about, where they had the yeah. WWE backdrop yeah. and they were being interviewed and was getting into the dude's like real life stuff. That was hilarious. But anyways, um, so Triple H Rock come to blows. Rhonda grabs Ste- Stephanie by like a foot, kind of puts her like in an arm lock and pulls does. back. Yeah. So Stephanie was like playing it off. It was kind of lame. I, I think she should have just fake hit her. Stephanie should have took one for the team. Oh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I mean, come on, Steph. You were the women's, women's champion at one time. You could have hit her about Yeah. So oh, she was in the SummerSlam match last year, remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah. What, yes, what the hell, Steph? Come on. Take, take a bump. Jesus. Ronda Rousey could have been. And it's WrestleMania. Where's been, your WrestleMania moment? Why no WrestleMania moment? You just got bitched by an arm bar. That wasn't even really an arm bar. It was kind of so following that, we have the match that's currently on our uh, screen over here: The Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. What did you think going into this match? Honestly, I wasn't looking forward to it because I felt like, uh, you know, after the end of the streak last year and the the match with Brock Lesnar and Brock becoming the one and twenty one one, um, I didn't really feel like there was a need to dig the Undertaker back out, so to speak. Uh, you nice. know. The, the last time I saw a picture of Taker after WrestleMania 30th, 30, oh God, was it the one was that was in the airport? Where you just old and like terrible and great. Obviously, the man broke out the Just for Men for WrestleMania 31. 
man. Couldn't go in, he couldn't go in the ring looking like Kevin Nash, you know. Um, nothing <clears> against <throat> Kevin Nash. Yeah, nothing against I'm a huge Nash fan. Love, love Diesel. I almost said Big Papa Pump. Oh. Big Papa, take a dump. That guy sucks. Wow. Big sexy is what I meant. Dude, Diesel's awesome. I love Kevin Nash. <clears throat> but I don't know, man. It was it was a throwaway match for me. I was honestly surprised to see them bring him back. But knowing that what they were bringing it back, I knew Bray Wyatt didn't have a chance. Right. And this would be my third and final pick that I nailed correctly for WrestleMania 31. That the Undertaker would walk right from the victory. Because what, what else? What, what's the point? The one thing that didn't happen, which is going to be 21 and 2. Yeah, no. The one thing I wish would have happened that Justin LeBar over at WrestleZone.com mentioned was uh, with him and I believe it was Josh Eisenberg. They, one of those two mentioned it. Yeah, hell, it might have been. Uh, uh, God, Michael Bullish, for all I remember. I, I, I don't know. But, um, I believe his name is Michael Bullish. Oh, it's Bullish. all Greek to me. Whatever. Kevin, Mike, Kevin or Mike, Gulish, the third guy. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Um, my whole thing was, or one of them said, it would have been, you know, let Taker win. You have a back and forth match. You don't know who's going to win. Taker comes up with the win. As Taker celebrates, you don't hurt Bray Wyatt's character by having Bray Wyatt come in and just dismantle The Undertaker after the match. So Taker still gets the win. Wyatt walks away looking right. strong. And then, you get, again, you don't see Taker again until you need him. That would have been great. <laughs> Which did happen. Yeah, because Taker you know, wins, does um, pose, and then you go to the Brock Lesnar-Roman Reigns uh, video back. Which, which now reminds me, we got excited here. I think you got a little bit excited and jumped ahead of yourself because of the match was being on TV 10 feet away from us. Forgot about Cena and Rusev. I did. <laughs> well, you just wanted to. I was going to say that really, for me, out of all the matches on the card this year, that was really the throwaway match. Oh, of course. Um, we knew Cena was going over. I didn't Cena think he was going to. I didn't think he was going to. I, I put Rusev over Cena, yeah, but okay. We both obviously thought this one's going to Rusev. It legit, for him to take out Cena at WrestleMania and hold on to the U.S. title would have gave Given a little more legitimacy to yeah his reign. I, I 100% agree. So, but no, you know, all American hustle, loyalty, respect. John Cena pulls another one out of his ass. Super Cena gets his WrestleMania moment, moment, and the U.S. title for the second time. Third time. Second time. Whatever. First time he, he won it was against um, Big Show WrestleMania 20. So it's a damn near uh, over a decade ago. Eleven years ago. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not bashed to Cena. I've said it before. I like Cena. You know, the, the, the gimmick is a little stale, but I like him. I, I like what he does. Yeah, you know, the like gimmick's definitely stale. If you don't understand the purpose or why he will never turn a heel, then you don't. You're just, you're, you must like to be blind. Yeah. The guy's got a huge following with kids. It is the PG era right now, um, which is regrettable for guys like us who are big Attitude Era fans or Ruthless Aggression. I'm cool with it. I get um, I, I get it. He has his place. You know right. what I mean? Um, they sprinkled a little bit of guys in there so you can kind of know. Like, I really you know, felt like the hero of the Russian Federation deserved better. Yeah. And finally, the main event. Big The one we've all been waiting for. The underdog. Who can't. Who won't. But he can and he will. Believe but he that. didn't. Yeah, believe that. Roman Reigns. Big dog of the shield. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a Roman Reigns fan. My problem Are is not with Roman Reigns. Uh-huh. It's with the company shoving Roman Reigns down everybody's throat. Now, had they let it happen naturally, kind of the way or Seth Rollins, yeah, like the way Seth Rollins is going about it, mm-hmm. where everybody knows Seth Rollins is the next thing, but WWE's not shoving him. They're just kind of like, well, the fans will like him when they like him. Right. Same thing happened with Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened with Dolph Ziggler. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened with Punk. Hell, same thing happened with Cena at one point, where the fans were actually behind them. And then they got sick of him. But with Roman Reigns, it was like, no, this is Roman Reigns, this is your guy, like him. It's like, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to have us, you have to have him progress naturally, so that way, over time, we want to cheer Roman Reigns. Especially, like, the marks would be like, well, you know what, Roman Reigns, if you give it enough time, Roman Reigns deserves it, Brock is never there. Why don't we have a champion who's never there? But instead, it backfires, and people are like, we don't want Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar's a badass. Well, and I think a lot of people have come to the realization that if you look back 20, 30 years ago, uh, even as far back as the first WrestleMania, champions weren't on every televised event. 
Dude, did you know that the first the WWF title was not defended at the first WrestleMania? Really? That is the only WrestleMania in history that did not have the title defended at it. That seems like a fucking mistake. Because the main event was the, the tag match with Piper and uh, Mr. T versus mm-hmm. Hogan and uh, Paul Orndorff. That's right. That's a mistake. But, uh, I mean, it was common practice at one time for the champion not to be on every show. You know, on the shows, you only see them at the pay-per-views. So it's not a big deal. I mean, it's, it kind of sucks. Uh, I, I would feel like for the money you want to get more out of Brock, I actually am not a huge Brock fan because of the way he chose to make his exit when he went to UFC. Back in yeah, the yeah, it's, it's to, to, to bitch slap the, the, the business in the well, face. Well, remember, he didn't go, yeah, yeah but there. he didn't go directly to UFC. He tried out for football first. Oh, that's, that's true, yeah. And he yeah, he didn't make it, so then he went to UFC. Well, yeah, and then when he went to UFC, he said, yeah, I quit that gay wrestling stuff because it's fake, and I want to beat people up for real. Yeah. So it's like, and now here you are, five, six, ten a years lot later. Cash. Yeah, and you're back. And they've not only are you back, they've given you the belt. And the streak. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Taker gave Which was streak. Taker's call. I understand that. But as a fan, whatever. So let's talk about this match. Roman Reigns, I'm not a fan of. Like you said, Roman Reigns has been shoved down our throat. Whether we wanted to. I really feel like, and if it didn't show a Royal Rumble, that people wanted, people, we wanted Daniel Bryan. Now, after watching this match, I posted, I, I even think I tweeted that, had that been Daniel Bryan in that match against Brock Lesnar, he might have died. <laughs> okay? Brock laid some serious, that one. <laughs> serious punishment on him. Dude, it was a Roman very, Reigns. very brutal match. But you know what? I don't know if you caught it. There was times, like, when Brock was just going to town on him, and Reigns was laughing. Yeah. No, like, I dude. The, and the smile. That yeah. is total. I don't know, like, if you, like, he queefed or something. And inside, and we didn't hear it. He just thought it was funny. <laughs> but uh, it was just like something feet. really, really sadistic, and I was just like, that, like that was badass to me. I, I think it was you're that getting your ass whipped by an official MMA fighter, and you're laughing in his face. It was like the badass Samoan warrior. Thing. Yeah, yeah, was. exactly. Like it just that whole side of him yeah, came it's out. Like you're you know? beating my ass, and I'm loving every second of it. All in all, dude, it was a great match. It was a great match. Oh um, my it, it gave us one of the greatest wrestling phrases for 2015. I don't think hands down we're going to get a better wrestling phrase than Suplex City, City, bitch. Hands down, it was the best. Yeah. I, I said going into this match that I didn't want him to win Roman Reigns. I wanted Brock to win. If Brock would won, I would be a fan. Suplex City, bitch, that made me a fan, dude. That made me a fan. Yeah. You know, and the fact that, uh, dude, did you see the video I posted? That somebody took the song. Yeah. yeah. Did you listen to it? I did. Dude, that song was awesome. It was, it was great. Dude. Somebody posted a song using Brock Lesnar's Suplex City line as the hook. Great song. Great stuff. Well, I'll post it later on in the Comics Remix uh, Facebook page, and I'll tweet it out. But, I mean, what a, what a great shock to the end of that match. You yes. Know, I, you know what? I honestly, I was so into the yeah, match. did not even think about it. And Seth Rollins comes in and catches like, it. I don't and even know why, match. when I sat down and thought about my picks for WrestleMania 31, that it did not occur to me. Seth Rollins needs to cash that money. Also because no one has cashed in their money in the bank. No one has done that history. So I was like, it just, it's well, a well played, like, man. Well played. Yeah. Very. It was a holy shit moment. And you know what? It just made the end of that match even greater. It did. And it one did. thing I think that also enhanced the match was nothing to do with the match itself. It was the fact that the, it got night outside. Mm-hmm. And then the colors inside with the red yeah. and the black matching from the sky. Dude, just made that match seem that much more sinister. It was great. I, I thought it was, it was awesome. Great. It was the icing on an epic WrestleMania cake. And who would have thought? Who would have mm-hmm. thought? A week later, we'd have been sitting here and been like, you know what? That Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar match was like great, right? There was a lot, a lot of internet hatred from the fans. I know some people that I'm friends with on Facebook that just they hated WrestleMania. They thought it sucked. I think they were crazy. You know, my girl was all into it until that match. Once, because she was really brains, you know. Figures. <laughs> Well, well you he's, know, he's hot, so all the ways, you know, he drives her sister, her stuff. sister's like, no, right, in love. Oh, like, yeah. Roman Reigns, is just, you can't say anything negative about Roman Reigns in front of her because she will suplex you. Um, but, so, yeah, my girl was rooting for Roman Reigns, and um, she was mad that Triple H won. She was, like, furious, you know? It sucked. I was disappointed, but I wasn't, like, so But at the end of it. It was funny because, like, I wanted Brock to win. She didn't. 
and Brock looked like he was winning, and I'm like rooting for him. And then when Seth Rollins catches him, she just splits her shit. She's like, no, 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 no. And when he when Roman Reigns loses, she's like, this WrestleMania sucks. I'm not going to go into exact <laughs> words. But she was going off about how crappy this pay-per-view was, and she's like, this is why she doesn't watch wrestling and all this other stuff. And I was like, you know, it was actually one of the better WrestleMania we've seen in a long time. She's like, no, you're fucking blind. You're full of crap. It was definitely better than last year's WrestleMania. Yes. With the, the exception at the Super Dome. The, with the exception of the Brock Taker. Or the match. Silver Dome or wherever. It was the Silver Dome. Where was it? It was at the Silver Su- Dome. It was at the Super Dome, wasn't it? I thought it was at the Silver Dome. And well, I, Hogan's I just screwed up a joke. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you dropped the yeah, ball. I dropped the ball. And I went home. I lost Austin in 2002. Oh, well. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all. Uh, that's our uh, that's our WrestleMania stuff, man. That's our uh, WrestleMania if you have not had a chance to watch WrestleMania 31 yet, and you were a fan at one point, you've gotten out of it lately in the past couple of years because of what one reason or another. Um, take it from our camera guy right now. He has been out of wrestling for quite a long time. He was from the 80s era, you know, the junkyard dog, hacksaw, and whatnot. And he's been here watching WrestleMania 31 with us, and his, I've seen his jaw drop more times than I can remember. Um, so take it upon yourself to try to watch WrestleMania 31 for what it is. Don't look at it as I'm going to get him back into wrestling. Just watch it for the one yeah, time. It was it was a great pay per view as a fan. Hopefully, it sets the tone for the rest of the year. That would be great. I doubt it. And if you're not, you know, if, if you if you really want to see it. You can always subscribe to the WWE Network. Only nine nine nine, 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 which actually got hit with my charge today. Thank you, Jim McGoy, for hooking up for free. Yes. You're not supposed to advertise that. Oh, whatever. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's all we got for this week. Brian, what do we got coming out breaking the fourth wall next Monday? Uh, next Monday, we're going to delve into uh, a lot of Marvel stuff. Age of Ultron, the premiere of Daredevil. Well, which won't be out yet, or it might be out. I don't know, but it's coming. Daredevil. No, it won't be out. Get ready to binge watch um, Age of Ultron. Some Secret Wars. Maybe uh, a little more convergence since it'll be out. I might have actually read a couple issues by then. Yeah. And we'll talk about more of the, on Wednesday with the AJ Lee retirement. Um, more on what WWE might or might not do with Sting. Possible mm-hmm. future of Samoa Joe. And Samoa more. Joe. Samoa That's Joe. Samoa Joe. We'll break down Raw and maybe SmackDown. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. But other than that, you can find all of our, our shows. Alex Martinez hosts Remixed Reviews, where he sits there and he talks about toys, reviews the toys, so make sure you watch that. It used to be called Collector's Corner, so big confusion. Um, Spinnerack, as Brian mentioned on Monday, the past episodes, issues have been uploaded to our YouTube page, which obviously you know by now. All 50 of them, maybe? Close to 50. 40 some. There are 44, but there's a couple holiday specials, and one of them was... We did some weird numbering there. I think issue 25 was a three-parter. I don't know. Which normally, which is really weird because people are going to look and it's going to be issue 25, part one, part two, part three. But then we have those other things where we talk about one thing and we continue it to the next issue and there's no, you know. Yeah. It's part two of the discussion, but it's a whole new issue number. Who the hell knows? But enjoy it. So it's still a drug day, man. Yeah. It's all that <laughs> Anyways, um, so we'll see you guys next week. ComicsRemix.com. You might see some out of date stuff on there, but it's cool because we're currently working on remapping. Oh, and if you're looking stuff. for videos, and it's, you know, this was just a special for this week since we're relaunching. Yeah, next Southern week we go season. back to just audio. So back to audio. Gonna rack a little lower. No more of this pretty face and this glass breaker right here. Glass breaker, nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. So we'll see you guys, or we'll email talk to you guys. Junior Comics Remix, Brian Comics Remix. Check me out at the Twitter, Brian at Spinnerack. I'm sorry, Big B at Spinnerack. Is that what it is? Twitter, yeah. At Spinnerack? Or yeah. wait. At Spinnerack. At the Spinnerack. Big B at Spinnerack. But you don't type in Big B. Uh, I or guess is it not. At Big B the Spinnerack. No, it's Big B at the Spinnerack. Yeah, I don't know. Twitter's weird, dude. I'm, I'm old. What the fuck? <laughs> so yeah anyways uh, thanks for listening watching we'll, we'll uh, talk to you guys next week good night peace